Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to do problem on structural analysis. We're going to determine if a frame is determinate or indeterminate. The frame is a little bit trickier than the truss, so make sure you guys watch the whole video. It is a very common FE question. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you some practice problems that you can use to study for your FE exam. If you guys like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we're giving a frame and we need to determine if it's determinate or indeterminate and by how many degrees. So we did a problem similar to this using a truss and a beam. If you haven't watched those videos, I will leave the link above somewhere there. But this problem, it's actually a little bit trickier than when we're dealing with trusses and beams. So the equation for this is provided to you on the reference manual. It's on page 158. You have here the frame equations. These are the same exact thing as this. So you, if you have this condition, you have unstable. If you have this condition, you have determinate. And for this case, you have an indeterminate. But for a lot of times, if it is indeterminate, you actually have to determine uh, how by how many degrees. So we'll go over that in a little bit as well. So note, guys, that the equation is similar to the one we, that we use for truss, except here we have a C. So the C is for the hinges. Here we are giving about three or four hinges. So let's see how we're going to calculate the hinges. That's where this problem can be a little bit tricky. Okay guys, so let's start with members. So M, we have about 10. So you can see here that we have about four plus three, four plus three, that's seven, eight, nine, 10. So we have 10 members. Joints, we have about nine. This is considered a joint, this is a joint, that's a joint as well. So you have three on this side, three on this side, and then three on this side, that's nine. The reactions, we have about nine as well, because this is a fixed end, right? Fixed end, as you guys remember, it has three reactions. We have the vertical force, horizontal force, and the moment. So here we have three, 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 that gives you nine. So nine reactions, and then C, that's the tricky one. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain it, guys, but just bear with me, okay? So if you look at C, we need to calculate how many hinges, but it's not that easy. So for this, these two or these three are actually simple. So we're just gonna have three, but we're going to add another one. So this one here, it's actually not just one, it's actually two. So you're supposed to have five hinges. Let me explain why that is. Hinges, if you guys remember from statics, or if you have a pin, at the hinge or at the pin, we have moment is equal to zero, right? So if I have, two members here, I technically have a moment here equals to zero, and I have another moment here that's equals to zero, right? So technically for this case, I'm going to have two hinges because this hinge is giving me two moments that are equal to zero, right? And that, I can use that to solve for my reactions because remember, we're doing this because we wanna know how many degrees is this frame is indeterminate, so that way I can see how many equations I need to be able to solve for the reaction, right? It's just like how for the beam, we have three reactions, three unknowns, we can easily use statics to use solve for it. So this hinge here helps us determine the reactions that we're trying to calculate for. So if you guys remember from structure analysis, if you have a frame like this, right? And if you have a hinge here, what we do, we literally cut to this section, we just solve for this portion here, and then from that, it helps us determine the reactions here. And then the way we do it is that we just say that the moment at this point is equal to zero. And then we can do the same thing for this side, okay? So this is the idea behind it. But when you have another member that's coming this way, so now you have three moments is equal to zero. But the third moment, it doesn't really help me much. If I just have two moments that are equal to zero, those are enough for me to determine my reactions. So I would just consider only two equations, okay? So that's uh, the idea behind this. Okay, guys, so there is a very similar question on the NCS practice exam. It's problem 58. If you actually take a look at their solution, it's really confusing. I couldn't follow it at first. If it made sense to you, great. If it didn't, try to apply this method here and see if you will get the same answer as them. If not, let me know in the comments below and I will try to make a video using their problem, 
okay? So now let's plug in the numbers in our equation and then see what we have, if it's determinate or in indeterminate structure. Okay, so we have 3 times m, which is 10, plus I have 9, right? And then we have 3 times the joint, which is 9, and then plus 5. So c is the number of hinges, and that's what we calculated here. Yeah, so we have 39 here, and then here we have about 32. Okay, so this is going to be greater than this. So we have an indeterminate case. And to, to find the degree of, how, of indeterminacy, it's actually really easy. It's exactly how we did with trusses. It would just be 39 minus 32 which equals to seven. So the answer is going to be D. It's indeterminate by seven degrees. I hope this problem helps guys. I hope it makes sense. If you guys want some practice problems, you can visit my website, just scroll all the way to the bottom, sign up or enter your email address, and I will send them to you along with some tips on how to tackle this exam. Okay guys, so that'll be it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. À la prochaine.